Weight loss and diet centers are particularly dangerous. I'm going to explain to you why. They mess with your metabolism. I've met so many former clients of diet centers that had lost weight on the program but gained back even more after they stopped. They don't work. When you reduce your calories below a certain level, your body instinctively tries to protect you by slowing down your metabolism to conserve energy. It thinks you're starving. It does not understand the goal. It switches to burning muscle tissue as a fuel. And as you're about to find out, you need the muscle to burn the fat. It all starts with having a basic understanding of metabolism. So metabolism is the speed at which your body processes food. In order to see results, you're going to need to take control of and raise your metabolism. So with this understanding, we realize that it's important for us to monitor our fat intake because those calories are going to pile up very quickly. But that means you have to become a little bit of a label in that. So we're going to look at, so Pam is low calorie cooking, right? We've all seen the commercials. This is low calorie cooking. Okay. Well, let's take a closer look. Calories per serving, four. Grams of fat per serving, 0 0.5. Does anybody know what's in the, what the main ingredient is in the pan? Anybody? Well, all fat. That's a pretty good answer. It's canola oil. Okay, canola oil is fat. Based. So let's take a look at some canola oil. Calories per serving, 80. Huh. Grams of fat per serving, 9. So if pan is made with Canola oil, how is it that it's so low in calories? Well, I'll tell you, it's very clever marketing. If you take a closer look, the serving size is one eighth of a teaspoon, or 0 0.5 grams. I can put that in perspective for you, that represents less than half a second of spray. How are you gonna cook with that? Right? Actually, good luck getting your finger off the button in time. Okay, so can you see that if you're doing vegetable stir fry, spraying the whole pan, thinking that you're eating low calorie, that's kind of a problem. So what's the culprit here? 70 grams of sugar in one of these bottles. 70 grams. Anybody know what 70 grams of sugar looks like? Okay, so here we go. One heaping teaspoon is about five grams. So you do some quick math. You guys were pretty sharp earlier. Five, 70 grams. I add five grams per teaspoon. How many do I need? Six, five. Not quite, 12. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's, let's do 13 an average amount. <laughs> <laughs> right. Two, three, feel free to count out loud with me. Four, five, I make this process more interesting. Six. Six. Got a bigger spoon. Ten. <laughs> Eleven. Yeah. Two more? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thirteen. Thirteen. Fourteen. Okay, now half of it ended up on the table. But this is what 70 grams of sugar looks like. Okay. So now let me explain something. When you ingest a simple sugar, it's very quickly absorbed by your body almost immediately enters the bloodstream. This causes your pancreas to make more of a hormone called insulin. Now, insulin's job is to take the excess blood sugar, uh, sorry, sugar out of the bloodstream and transport it into the muscle where it can be stored for later use. Now, the problem with that is while your pancreas is turning out this insulin, it cuts way back on its production of another hormone called glucagon. And glucagon is needed to release the fat from the cell and transport it into the muscle where it can be burned. So in other words, when you take in a simple sugar, you are turning off your body's fat burning mechanism, effectively locking in your stored fat. So now that you know what sugar does to your body, do you want to drink this? So what's the cheat thing? You know. Okay. So this is how it works. Give me an example of a, a food that you like but you know you're not supposed to eat. Pizza. Why does everybody always say pizza? I'm not a huge fan of pizza. I'll stick a butter. Chocolate. Okay, too late. One other time. So let's say, let's use pizza now. So Jeff, listen. If I told you, Jeff, 
you can never have pizza. All right? And no matter what you do, don't you dare think about pizza. What are you thinking about? Pizza. Right. It doesn't work. We're not wired that way, right? So I'm saying you don't have to give up the foods that you love. Pick a day. It should be one day a week. It should always be the same day. And on that day, uh, it's not like a, a food orgy. You're still going to try to eat well. Is that food orgy? That expression doesn't work. <laughs> if you want to treat yourself, that's the time to do it. And that works in a couple of ways. First of all, let's say your cheat days on Sunday, okay? And it's Thursday and you're craving a slice of pizza. It's much easier for you to say to yourself, you know what, I can hang on until Sunday, than think I can never have pizza. We just proved it doesn't work. Right? And then the second thing is, if you're doing this mostly on one day, chances are, you're eating more of the right foods on the other six days. You're starting to feel it. You have energy such that when you overdo it on your cheat day, you immediately feel tired, <coughs> bloated. You feel so disgusted you don't want to see those foods again for another week. So it reinforces the good behavior. Okay. Given what we've been learning so far, what do you guys think? Does cardio burn fat, anyone? Yeah. Yes? Anyone else? Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> I don't know if that's an answer, but okay. The, the answer is, it might, possibly, depends on the circumstances. Okay? So remember, fat loss is a two-step process. You have to first release the fat from the adipose cell where it's stored, then transport it into the muscle where it can be burned. Now, the problem is, and the part that most people struggle with, is not the burning, it's the releasing. So if you do not first put your body in a place where it's hormonally willing to release fat, you can't burn fat. And that goes back to the whole uh, insulin glucagon balance that we just discussed earlier. So if you're having a cereal with orange juice for breakfast, and you're going to hit that 10 o'clock spin class thinking you're going to burn some fat, I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. You have to build your fat burning machine. Awesome. Muscle is your fat burning engine. Muscle is your metabolism. Fat is burned through muscle. Once your body adapts, you can't progress. That's why we have to always ask the body to adapt to a new stimulus. So if I give you a weight that's heavier than you've tried before, that's a stimulus. But that's just one example. There are many different um, training factors that we can manipulate to devise a new challenge. You want to choose primarily free weight exercises over machines because the free weight exercises you have to stabilize more, which strengthens the smaller supporting muscles and more deeply stimulates your nervous system. You want to perform the movements correctly so that your workouts can be effective and you don't get hurt. Even if you don't get hurt the first time doing it wrong, doing it wrong over time is going to lead to muscle imbalances that cause injuries. Remember, two out of 100, statistically speaking now, reach their New Year's resolutions for losing weight. Okay. Did you guys know that some commercial health clubs have literally tens of thousands of members? Did you ever wonder how they're able to keep selling memberships? It's because 70% of their members never use the gym. It doesn't matter how well designed your Bowflex or your treadmill is, if it sits in your basement, and substitutes as an expensive coat rack or it's something you hang the laundry on to dry. You're bound to encounter challenges on your journey to getting fit. That's why you need someone to guide you through this process and keep you accountable. It is far too easy to rationalize not doing something if you're accountable to yourself. Uh, I want to say that it's been an honor and a privilege to uh, entertain and teach you today. At least I hope you were somewhat entertained and you, you learned some stuff. No matter where you are today, you have the power to change where you are tomorrow by the decisions you make. So make good ones. Thank you very much.